Hello again for another part of the array operation in the path workbench. We are going to talk about the polar array. I've prepared a simple square body with a sketch with a diagonal line on it. As you can see, the body is centered in the origin. It's not as I usually do with one corner in the origin. You will see a little bit later why I did that so I can explain you about the polar array centering options. Let's hide the origin and let's start by creating a job with this body. I've called it polar array as you have seen in my previous episode about the linear one-dimensional array and let's go to the path workbench select the body create a new job make sure the polar array body is selected select the template the six millimeters hardwood template i'll just click ok because all the job settings are as they should be but if i go to the job and try to select this line to create a slot you will see that it doesn't create that line it just moves to one corner and that's it and that's because the sketch isn't recognized as a normal geometry for path operations so i'll have to either convert this sketch to a shape or embed it somehow in the body i've shown you in the linear one dimensional array how to make it using the slice in the part workbench for the polar array part i will show you how to convert this to a shape so let's first go to the draft workbench i select the sketch and go to the toolbar and select the draft to sketch button even though it is called draft to sketch it also converts sketches to draft elements like a line as you can see it created my line here now i can hide the sketch and i will press g and r to hide the grid i'll go back to the path workbench double click the job go to the general tab go to the model part click on edit and now i can select from the 2d category the line that i've just converted from my sketch i will click ok click ok again to close the job and now i can select this line and when i press the slot button you can see it will create a slot as it should first of all let me adjust the depth this is just a 10 millimeters deep body so if i want a 3 millimeters slot i will enter 7 for the final depth you can see there is one line here the operation is as it should be i will click ok to close it now i want to repeat this 12 times around the origin let's say i want to make a clock a wall clock and i want 12 lines to represent the hours of the day so i will just select the slot operation and go to the array button click on it and as i've told you in the previous video the array will just be created it doesn't have an interface to edit the values but you can find them in the data tab first thing that i want to change is the type i have a linear one dimension array by default and i will change it to polar you can see that i have a different few values here different variables that uh, for the linear one dimension array what i need to do is to adjust two values the angle and the copies the angle actually gives the position and the copies gives the number of copies of course since i want 12 hours i will just write 12 here then i need to change the angle the angle represents the total angle that all these copies will span so if i write here 60 degrees the 12 copies will span across 60 degrees so if i want an all-around distribution of the 12 copies i will just write 360 degrees press tab and now you can see they are evenly distributed around the center of the operation by default the center of the operation is the origin that's why i actually created the body with a centered rectangle but i also can change the center of the operation by modifying the values here the x y and z of the center let's say i want the center to be 50 millimeters to the right you can now see the operation has a different center this can be something very useful when i want to create patterns but we will talk about this in a future episode now let's go back and move the center so you can see it looks as it should to show you exactly how the center can be correctly placed i will just modify the sketch and remove the constraint for the center of the body here is the constraint to center the rectangle i will just delete it and now i can move my rectangle around select this point and this point the origin and make a coincident constraint you can see the line remained where it was we have to move it so i'll go to the draft workbench select the line select the move option select the end of the line you can see it highlighted in white it's pretty difficult to see it but you can actually see it and now i'll just snap it to the corner of the body and you can see it is positioned correctly i will go back to the path workbench i have to go back to the job go to the setup tab and click on refresh 
and just click OK. When changing positions of thing in a job, you always have to go to the setup tab and refresh the bounding box. Otherwise, the bounding box used will be the one with the previous positioning of the body, so everything will be a mess. So now, even though it looks like everything is OK in the job, even though I have updated the bounding box, the line is still in an initial position. I will have to click the edit button, remove the line, click OK, then click the edit button again, go to the to the category, reselect the line and edit again. Now I can click OK and the line move to the correct position, but the slot operation will have the base geometry element, the line missing, so I'll add it again, just select it, click on add, click on apply. Now you can see the slot operation is correctly placed and the array is working as it should because I still have the center here in the origin of the operation. So I can measure it using the part design of the part workbench and the ruler. Just go and measure everything is 70.71 millimeters. So I'll go to the array, go to the center and change the X and the Y accordingly. First I press the equal sign to be able to enter a formula 70.71 divided by 2 of course. The same for the Y 70.71 divided by 2. That's the center point. And now you can see the operation is where it should be. I'll just delete the dimensions so they won't bother us. Go back to the path workbench and for now I will hide the body so we can make sure with a top view that the lines are distributed equally around the new center that I've set for the array operation. Since I'm using a 3-axis CNC, the Z value of the center doesn't actually matter. I can just set it at any value that I want because the rotation will be made in the XY plane. So no matter how high the center point is, when projected to the XY plane, it will be in the same spot. And that's all about the polar array operation. It can be very useful in certain situations when making different things that are just repeating around the center it can be used for holes for slots for engravings and so on thank you for watching and i'll see you next time to talk about the last type of array that we are going to cover the linear two-dimensional array